All right, everyone. Really interesting thread from at true Canuck one one. And that Canuck is spelled with a Q. The Isle of Lost Souls, Heart Island, New York, or the Isle of Lost Souls, is located at Long Island Sound in the Bronx, New York City. As a writer, it would be amazing to give a voice to all those forgotten souls that remain in mass burial sites. The island is a resting place for the homeless, sick, or the poor who couldn't afford a proper burial. It's estimated around a million souls are buried on the island today, with about 21% of burials on the island being fetal remains. I also discovered there's restricted access to the island restricted by New York's Department of Corrections, who up until 2019 was in charge of Hart Island. It's reported it's much easier to visit Rikers Island than Hart Island. Why so much secrecy? Ferry boat service operates very infrequently and strict visitation quotas are imposed. The grave sites are marked by a pipe or stick. One pipe or marker equals 150 adults or 1,000 babies. It's also the resting place of bodies after benefiting science at elite New York City medical schools. Authorities have only allowed families as far as a wooden gazebo close to the shoreline. Prison rules apply. No phones, no cameras. Strict ID checks. Why wouldn't family members be allowed access? On April 9, 2020, drone footage of Hart Island began circulating in the mainstream media as reports that coronavirus victims would be temporarily buried on the island. Reports stated New York City officials hired contract laborers to bury the dead in its potter's field on Hart Island as the city's daily death rate from the coronavirus epidemic had reached new records. Typically, on average, some 25 bodies are interred each week by low-paid jail inmates from Rikers Island. Department of Corrections spokesman Jason Kirsten stated, quote, Operations have increased from one day a week to five days a week, with around 24 burials each day. City officials haven't explained whether the increase in burials is due to pressure on mortuaries to dispose of bodies more quickly. The virus has reportedly been killing hundreds of New York City residents each day. de Blasio told NY1 News that under such a contingency plan, bodies of COVID-19 victims would be buried individually not in mass graves so families could later reclaim them. If the drone footage is legitimate, that isn't what we're seeing. Cheeseman, a funeral director in New York City, stated, quote, Funeral directors are overwhelmed. We're inundated. The crematory can't even take bodies for two weeks. The funeral homes don't have refrigerated trucks parked out front, end quote. De Blasio stated, quote, So because there's just been unfortunately more people passing away, including those who are not claimed by any family, that's what's been happening at Hart Island. But that's the only thing that's been happening at Hart Island, end quote. So, this left me scratching my head. The only thing happening on Hart Island? Are there decreased coronavirus victims being buried there or not? And what an odd statement. But that's the only thing that's been happening at Hart Island. What doesn't Mayor de Blasio want the public to know? It's been so difficult in the past for family members to visit the island. They were finally granted access, but not until legal action was threatened. After a solid week of coverage about coronavirus victims being buried at Hart Island, this was released yesterday. USAToday.com fact check. 
New York City is not planning to use trenches in local parks as burial ground. Like so many other events that have transpired the past few years, I believe a spotlight is being cast on Heart Island for a reason. All this makes no sense to me, so I dug a little further and discovered the Heart Island Project. Described as a public charity founded by visual artist Melinda Hunt, quote, which has tried to improve access to the island and make burial records more easily available, end quote, from heartisland.net. From 1991 to 1993, New York artist Melinda Hunt and photographer Joel Sternfeld were given permission to photograph Heart Island for their book published in 1998. Hunt subsequently founded the Heart Island Project to help the families and friends of those buried on Heart Island. She has created many stories about those buried on the island to give a voice to those lost souls. Quote from Reed.edu Hunt is an artist, but the portrait of Heart Island she created over the past 19 years blurs the boundaries of that job description. She has become Heart Island's detective and de facto archivist, its lead witness and chief scribe. End quote. Melinda obtained cemetery burial records with the assistance of two lawyers. The next step she took was to create a database of the records. Registered visitors would now have the ability to search the database, submit their stories, images, and related links for the project. She created a traveling cloud museum, a searchable database she likes to call a sort of Facebook for the dead. This puzzled me. Heart Island is the largest tax-funded cemetery in the U.S., and the government of New York hadn't created a reliable database for the deceased? A visual artist and Yale graduate has been tasked with this work? Does this sound logical? Quote, Hunt will join several city council members to reintroduce legislation which would transfer the island from the Department of Correction to the Department of Parks and Recreation and establish regular ferry service to the island, end quote, from fox5newyork.com. December 4th, 2019, Bill de Blasio transferred Hart Island from the Department of Corrections to Parks and Rec after pressure for more access. This also conflicts with current media reporting. It would seem this hasn't happened yet. So let's follow the money. The Heart Island Project has been funded by several philanthropic organizations. Funding has come from the Canadian Council of the Arts, Banff Center for Arts and Creativity, the Puffin Foundation, and New York State Council on the Arts. Canadian Council of the Arts has been the main funder since its inception. It's a Canadian government initiative with three divisions, with the main being the Canadian Commission for UNESCO. This is the very same Art Council Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's 2016 budget promised $19 billion in funding over a five-year period, too, along with the Mockingbird Media CBC. Yep, that council. The Banff Center for Arts and Creativity is another Canadian government initiative started by the Carnegie Foundation in New York. It's now affiliated with the University of Calgary. Who is the main contributor? The Canada Arts Council. See how this works? What family has been a main philanthropist for the arts in Canada and New York? The Bronfman family. They even had an award created honoring Sadie Bronfman, wife of Samuel Bronfman, Edgar Bronfman's parents. Another funder is the New York State Council on the Arts, NYSCA, established in 1960 through a bill introduced in the New York State Legislature by New York State Senator McNeil Mitchell with backing from Governor Nelson Rockefeller the Rockefeller family. The Puffin Foundation has been another major funder of the Heart Island Project over the years. This foundation was started by philanthropist Perry Rosenstein, who made his fortune in the Allen screw business. 
It was reported recently that Perry Rosenstein, the founder of the Puffin Foundation and philanthropist, died from coronavirus. One last thing I found interesting when looking into Heart Island, its proximity to notorious Plum Island run by the Department of Homeland Security. There are many theories about what happens on Plum Island, including human and animal experimentation. Coincidence? Heart Island sustained significant damage from Hurricane Sandy. FEMA gave the city $13.2 million in 2015 to use towards repairs. A design firm was hired in 2016 and bid for contractors are in progress. Work is expected to begin in 2020, eight years later. Quote from the article on cbslocal.com. The cliffs of Heart Island are sort of exposed and bones are washing up on Long Island Sound. That hasn't been repaired yet, said Melinda Hunt, the founding director of the Heart Island Project. In the meantime, bones continue to wash up on shore. Bodies have also washed up on the shores of Plum Island prior to Hurricane Sandy. Some with very strange attributes from the New York Post bones with very long fingers. Uh, bones with very long fingers found on Plum Island near Disease Lab. This mysterious mutant washed up on the shores of Montauk, New York in July 2008. Plum Island has been the focus of many conspiracy theories over the years. Maybe this was a clown created distraction. Look here, not there. Given what we know of the human experimentation taking place by elite organizations like Nexium, Epstein, and many of the elite universities in New York, I suspect we may be about to find out where the bodies are buried. Sometimes, dead men do tell tales. The end. <laughs>